Hey everybody, Jam Creates here, doing another video review for you guys, uh, another comic book review. This time I'm going to be reviewing Blowtorch number one from Second Sight Publishing. Um, but before I get into that, I just want to remind you guys, if you're new here, you know, thank you for stopping by, and please hit the subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, click thumbs up, all that good stuff, and thank you for being here. Uh, I also want to say for anybody who has been here with me for a while, whether you're new or I picked up a bunch of new subscribers recently, if you're one of them, awesome, welcome aboard. If you've been here for a long time, even better, I love you even more. Uh, well, that's not true. I love all my subscribers equally. Okay. Um, anyway, thank you so much for being here. I'm closing in on 400 subs, and I'm really excited about that. That's really cool. It's taken a long time to get that far. Uh, but I'm really happy with the way we've been doing it. So I'm super happy about that. If you want to get more content from me, especially content involving indie comics, check out IndieComicsUnderground.com. That is my website dedicated solely to indie and crowdfunded comics. That is all we do on that website. We've got articles. We've got interviews with creators. We've got artist spotlights where we talk, do interviews with artists, indie comic artists, um, previews art exclusive art reveals all kinds of cool stuff and of course these video reviews turn up on there as well a lot of fun really cool site especially if you're into indie comics all right so let's get into this this is blowtorch issue one like i said uh so now what i'm gonna do is this is the cover uh for some reason uh just full disclosure uh one of the creators reached out to me and asked me if i would do a review so he sent me a copy uh, for whatever reason, uh, this is the cover, but I'll open up the uh, book. This is the actual book. Um, so uh, the inside is black and white, um, obviously. <laughs> uh, and so what I want to say right off the bat, um, I really didn't know what to expect going into this, honestly. Um, because... You know, like I said, they, he reached out to me, so I didn't or I wasn't already familiar with uh, Blowtorch or uh, there's another group. Blowtorch is apparently part of another of a group of superheroes called Chess. Um, it's, uh, you know, C-H-C period H period E period. You get it. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't rem I'm not sure what the acronym stands for, but uh what this is, is this is a book that focuses on the character of Blow, of Blowtorch. So what you get, first and foremost, I just want to say, like, the art is absolutely phenomenal in this book. Um, and you can see it for yourself. You'll see it as I'm flipping through, especially. So we start off with this flashback eight years ago. You see this, this soldier who's clearly been probably caught in an IED or something, and he's just burned and, and mangled. Uh, and then we cut to today. And, you know, the character is answering his phone and we don't see his face. And obviously that is Blowtorch. And then he's leaving and he's always got this mask on. And I think this is a really cool idea. Um, Blowtorch is this character who's been disfigured, but he's a hero. But he doesn't like, obviously doesn't like people seeing his disfigured face. So he's always wearing his mask. And I think that's just kind of a cool character conceit. Uh, it just shows you kind of a little bit of insight into the character uh, in that he's obviously self-conscious about the way he looks and everything. And I think that's kind of cool. And what I will say right from the get-go is you're just kind of dropped in. You know, he answers his phone, he finds out there's a problem, and then he just starts leaving. And we've got uh, Footpath, who's another character uh, as part of the chess team. And, you know, she was like... You know, remember when Avery told us to keep an eye on the place while him and the rest of the team were away? You notice the word us in there? And he was like, yeah. He's like, yeah, but I got to go. And um, she's like, well, if you're going, then I'm coming with you. So it, what you end up getting is you get this. Um, the best way I could relate it is do you if you were a fan of the X-Men, right, of, of really of any time, whether it's the 80s or 90s, whatever, um, they would always have these issues. Sometimes there would be like certain characters would get a breakout story and they would get their own series or their own, you know, one shot or something that would tell a story about them. Um, obviously, the, the biggest cases, of course, Wolverine, but they did a, a Gambit series and a Bishop series and, and other stuff. 
And um, what th this kind of reminds me of that because they're part of a team and it's one of those things where uh, you would get that adventure where suddenly like Wolverine and Jubilee would go on some mission without the rest of the X-Men and they would be on their own or you'd get, you know, Cyclops and, and Rogue or something like some oddball combination of, of two team members would go on an adventure and that would be the issue. And that's what this kind of reminds me of. And it really has that feel um, that I really enjoyed. I, I, I honestly, I really like even not knowing like they start talking about stuff. So he starts telling her about his background, like, cause she decides, cause she's, she's like, oh, no, I'm coming with you. So they're like, all right, we'll lock the place up. We'll go. So he, ex he's explaining to her about how he was uh, caught in the explosion. And, you know, he was, this woman was in the hospital, the nurse taking care of him. And uh, I don't remember, remember actually, she might've been a doctor. Um, and uh, no, she was a nurse and uh, she looked after him and they fell in love and eventually got together while she was taking care of him. And um, then, of course, then, then he was saying how things went went poorly later and they make a mention of one of the guys in his squad was injured by the same blast and he survived and he was really into this woman, Suzanne, and. Uh, they ended up, his relationship, Blowtorch's relationship with, with Suzanne didn't work out. And then she ended up with him. And, um, so they talk about this thing and then she says like the guy we fought in Kyoto, the one called stress. So obviously there was something else here. The one thing I will say, just a little constructive piece. If you're going to do that, if you're going to reference something that happened in another book, maybe it happened in an issue of chess. Maybe that was like chess number one or something. Um, I know it sounds like super old school and super cliche, but if you do the little asterisk and, you know, editor's note thing of just saying, see whatever issue, whatever, um, especially in indies, I feel like it's super important if you happen to have that kind of a thing where you're tied in with another, another book. And that's another book that I, as a consumer could be like, oh, well, I didn't know about that. Maybe I'll, if I just happened to see Blowtorch number one on the book, on the stands and just picked it up and I read it and I enjoy, enjoyed it. Um, why wouldn't I want to go seek out that other book? Cause now I know, like for a fact, I know there's another book, you know what I mean? So that was one, that's one little critique. I would say one little criticism, not even a criticism, just a little like thing. I would say, I know it seems old school. And I know it seems trite to do the little see last issue or see that like, I'm not saying you have to do it every time, but if you're doing a new property like this, it's great to encourage the readers to go see another property. You know what I mean? That's all. It's just a little tip, little thing. It, it Maybe not everyone agrees, but that's how I feel. Um, so anyway, they end up finding out that Suzanne is in trouble. She's on this base that's in Alaska. They're doing these horrible experiments and... They're going there to help her. She knows some, like she she basically contacted him and said things are going sideways here. Something is really bad is going to happen, and I'm in danger. So he still cares for her, and also he's a hero, so he's going to do the right thing. So he goes to say he goes to to help her. So the two of them show up there, and they uh, access the base, you know, in Alaska, and then you get all of a sudden they get it. They they come across this horrific scene, and then they're attacked by this guy and these crazy like ice creatures that he has and he's just losing his mind um and it's a result of the experiments that were going on in this base is why this guy is just flipping out going crazy and attacking and um i just want to show you this stuff just to give you a, a feel for some of the action uh the dynamic uh artwork in the action scenes i wanted to get to an action scene to just show you that i don't want to show you too much more of the book because i don't want to spoil anything you know how i feel about spoiling stuff i would much rather encourage someone to read something and let them enjoy the reveals and whatnot for themselves. So there's a really well-developed story here and it is complete in this issue. And I really, really like that. Um, especially for an indie comic where, you know, sometimes as a consumer of indie comics, you might not be able, especially if you're somebody who's relying on the stores. Now, if you're available uh, digitally and you've got like 
either Comixology or your own store or whatever, like a way for people to get your books digital so that you know they won't have to miss an issue, that's awesome. But if you're just relying on being in the stores, comic shops are definitely hit or miss when it comes to small press and indies about getting stuff every issue. And if you don't happen to add it to your pull list, and let's face it, you probably would have just picked it up on a whim, seeing it and thinking, oh, this looks cool. And you know how that works. Like the previews catalogs are like months and months out. So like you might miss an issue. They didn't order it. And then you, you just scramble and trying to find an issue. So um, I really appreciate the fact that this, this issue has a complete story all in the one issue. Uh, it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And it's a good story. It's a simple action story. Uh, but there's more to it. Uh, there's, you know, the whole story of what's going on and who this guy is and how he came to be this way. And then the way they end up uh, ultimately at the end winning the day and, you know, rescuing Suzanne and what happens with that. Um, so there's there's stakes and the action rises as the comic goes on. It does a great job of even throwing in the middle a it's like in the middle they throw in this little this little section of like okay we're explaining and then and then boom something happens to just kind of like shock you after they've met these people it's really good stuff like so i a hundred percent uh would really really recommend you guys check this one out um that's i don't want to say too much more about it we'll go back to we'll go back to this guy maybe we'll just um I don't want to say too much more about what happens in the story, but I do want to say I definitely wholeheartedly recommend this book. I was really, really pleasantly surprised. You know, I have people reach out to me from time to time and send me stuff. And, you know, sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not so good. Sometimes it's average. This one is definitely above average. I really, really like this one. It is a standout action title. If you like action with character and personality and a complete story all in the one issue, I would wholeheartedly recommend it because you're not going to be left going like, well, I don't even know how the story ends, you know? And that's a mistake I see a lot of indie comics people making is everything is to be continued, to be continued. Get people invested first and then you can tell your bigger story, I feel like, is, is a way to go. Uh, maybe not for everyone and maybe not everyone feels that way, but it was really refreshing to read an issue that had a, a beginning, a middle, and an end, and is still open for more down the road. That's the that's really the beauty of the way this is put together, and I really, really enjoyed it. Like I said, the artwork is top-notch. This is, this is what you would consider, in my mind, you know, what you would call, quote-unquote, professional or whatever you want to call it. Not that they're not professionals. I, I, it's such a weird thing that we do in, in comic books where we talk about indie and mainstream and this and that. And then the perception of the mainstream has changed so much that bottom line is, is it good or is it not good? It's good. The artwork is very good. The story is very good. The characters have a depth to them. They are not perfect. They, it was nice to see, like, you know, the different personalities uh, of Blowtorch and uh, Footpath. Um, she doesn't get that much uh, development in the story, but it's nice to have this other character along for the ride as well. Um, just really good stuff. Like I said, it reminded me a lot of uh, the X-Men stories that I really enjoyed. And I'm losing my voice as I'm doing this video. That's really weird. I don't know what's going on. Uh, so that's a signal, I guess, that the world is telling me to wrap this one up. So I will definitely just wrap it up there and say wholeheartedly, 100% recommend uh, Blowtorch number one. Definitely check it out. Uh, what I will do is, here, I'll bring the cover back up for you so you can recognize it. Blowtorch number one, definitely recommend wholeheartedly. Uh, it's from Second Sight Publishing. They do have a website, um, so you can check that out. Uh, if I remember, I'll put the link down in the description below, uh, and you can check it out. Like I said, I really, really, I really liked it a lot. Um, so, and, and it's the kind of thing that like I would definitely read and want to read more of. Uh, so I, like I said, I recommend. Thank you guys for being here. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. We'd love to have you. We'd love to get to that 400. Spread the word. Tell your fr friends and family. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at jam underscore creates. You can follow me on Instagram at jam underscore creates. And you can follow me on TikTok 
uh, jam underscore creates where TikTok is all about me posting my own artwork. Um, and somehow, some way, I just posted one t uh, TikTok video that's over 7,000 views, and I don't know how that happened. Uh, <laughs> I guess people liked it. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, but anyway, uh, definitely come along for the ride. Have a good time. Visit IndieComicsUnderground.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read this or if you're thinking about checking it out now or if you've maybe read something else from Second Sight. Uh, they do have other books as well. Uh, so let me know, and I'd love to hear from you. I'll talk to you guys again soon. Peace out.